Hello everybody, welcome back on this wonderful Wednesday evening. We have something exciting today, something happening for the first time, but before we get into that, let's get into us. I'm your host Theo, no one has the only one. Today I'm joined by Dan, so wonderful to have you on the desk today. How are you feeling? Thank you, I'm very, very excited. This is going to be an absolute first here for the Saints stream. Of course, we have never had any traditional sports game on our varsity teams in the past. This is of course the first time for this semester and the first time here on the stream and what a way to start it off here. Of course, we're competing at ECAC. They do Swiss rounds. The matches are generated randomly. And it's St. Clair versus St. Clair to start things off. What are the chances? Very, very low chances. It's going to be uh, definitely an interesting start this season as we do have to play our own. But, you know, it's going to be a good start. Uh, both of our players are definitely very, very good. So it's going to make them... Uh, really prepare for the season and you know both both players looking to have a st strong showing today in theory it should make yeah for like a comfortable start because yeah. like, you're getting used to the the league getting used to the regulations and all, everything along those lines but then knowing that like no matter what you're not really inconveniencing your opponent it's literally your teammate that you've probably been practicing with for like the last couple of months but uh should be t intense still either way. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of uh, the players, we actually have an uh, interview. So uh, le let come on in here. Let's let's get right, yes, right of course. into it. The captain as well as player, or I should say, the captain of the entire sports wing. It is going to be Jay Sauce. Jordan Humber is here, also a player here on the NHL squad. And Jordan, I mean, anyone who's watched the Saints for the last uh, year or so are probably used to seeing you here behind yeah, the desk. Yeah. But definitely not in this fashion how does it feel to be a competitor it is it is so incredible to get a chance to uh be on the stream now but in a different sense um i do absolutely miss being behind the desk but getting a jersey getting to play and represent the school is amazing yeah it's your first match of the season obviously playing your teammate uh how are you how are you feeling about this whole new like um just the traditional sports gaming just going mainstream now. I think that it's just absolutely incredible uh, for these traditional sports games to get a chance to shine in ECAC. Um, besides NHL, we have other big hits like EAFC uh, and two, uh, NBA 2K as well um, that we all compete in. And I have a lot of different players for each of those as well. Um, but it, it's just absolutely incredible because uh, there is such a big fan base behind these games. And I really hope that we get a lot of them coming out to watch us too. Absolutely. Absolutely. We did see via social media and even taking a look at the uh, the Twitch following list mm -hmm. prior to the match even starting. And there's a bunch of new faces here. So it's really, really cool to see that traditional sports crowd coming on in here. Mm -hmm. And you're, of course, you're managing not only the NHL side of things, mm -hmm. but all of the um, traditional sports games here. And from what it sounds like, you basically have something going on every day of the weekday. Like, yeah. um, what exactly is going on? How do you manage like four, five different teams? Yeah. Granted, it's usually... It's an individual sport, mm -hmm. but it still has to be difficult. Um, yes, it, it definitely was a challenge to take on, and um, I was absolutely ready to take it head-on right from the beginning. Uh, five different teams that compete um, every single day throughout the week. So as a coach, I'm attentive to a couple different players each single day, but as a player, I play in three of them myself. So um, I also have to make sure I keep up my practices and keep up with uh, all these guys that I've also got to coach because there is some absolutely killer talent on this team. Well, you say you play three games. Would you rank your favorite from least favorite to most favorite? Oh, uh, out of the three games I play, my most favorite absolutely has got to be tonight, NHL. Um, I'm, I'm a hockey kid. I love it. It's my absolute favorite thing in the world. Um, and then it's got to go NBA 2K for my second, uh, just a classic for me, and it's where I got a chance to really start this team. And then I also play in MLB The Show. Um, I just kind of really started getting back into the grind, and I've got a really strong team behind me as well, a bunch of different uh, people that are able to help with that. That's definitely interesting. And does, of course, from one traditional sports game to the other, there's one more from myself and then maybe one more here from Theo before mm -hmm. we let you go, get uh, ready to hit the rink. But um, does any skill or like any mechanics kind of transition over from one sports game to the other? Or is it basically like a complete brand new learning experience every single time? They're, depending on the game itself, like I'd say uh, basketball and hockey between the two games, obviously there's a couple similarities. The passing, uh, it's five on five. Um, there are a couple skills that transfer in between, but then you have a sport like football uh, right. that's just wildly different um, and requires a whole different set of mechanics. 
Absolutely. Well, thank you for joining us on the Dev State. It's a pleasure to have you always. Good luck in your match today thank and you. Uh, take it home. Sounds good. Absolutely. <laughs> One way or another, as Saints will end up a victorious here. But of course, JSOS looking to lead the charge here with this first ever NHL game here on stream. Definitely exciting. And I was going to give them, them all a quick moment to get situated. They're, of course, playing all the way in S3, which is like on the opposite side yeah. of the college, it feels like at this point here. But I don't know. Just excited to see this happen here. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. You know, some of the powerhouses in hockey are going to be the strongest teams in the game. What teams do you think we'll oh, see geez. today? Oh, goodness. So, like, I'm trying to think of, because this is based off of going into 2024, right? So, yeah. like, if you're really, really trying to metagame it, are you just picking Florida Panthers and then just uh, going with that or maybe Boston or something like that? Or do you pick something that's maybe a little bit more close to home like the, the Red Wings or, say, the Maple Leafs here? Well, don't do that. You're just cursing yourself. <laughs> yeah, but don't I mean, go with the Maple Leafs. <laughs> as a Maple Leaf fan, don't do it. But, like, what do you think? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I think the Panthers are definitely a, a, good, a good option, very, very strong team. But I don't know. Maybe these players have teams that, a couple of players have some niche attributes that maybe even the best players in the game don't have, and they just like using certain players in certain roles. So mm -hmm. you never know. We'll have to we'll have to definitely see, but uh, definitely expect one of, some of the stronger teams in, in the NHL to definitely show up today. Yeah, for when I was going through the rule book and whatnot, just to kind of understand a little bit how this is going on. So the format, of course, for those, because this is, of course, the first time we're doing yeah. this here, it is going to be a best of three matchup here today. So it's not just going to be a one and done, but the periods um, are not full length. So each period is only five minutes long compared to 20. And you're not allowed any custom teams or anything along those yeah. lines. So you can't make up your own player, throw it onto the team. You can't mix and match players to make a super team or anything like that. And like compared to some other game modes where you might have to um, open packs or something to get players, you don't have to worry about anything of that. It's just strictly what comes in the game itself. So it's more of a skill-specific type of matchup. You can definitely be looking forward to that, but... I'm curious, like, like, how do you even... It's not like you get to really switch maps or anything no. in between game one or two. So, like, how do you even adjust? I mean, you just have to <laughs> basically pattern recognition of what the other person does. And if you catch on to a thing or two that they're doing consistently, you can definitely turn the ties. But with that being said, we're going to throw it to a very, very short break. And we'll be right back with game one. Welcome back, everybody. A little short a break, but we we're just about to get into the game. It's going to be the Colorado Avalanche taking on the Edmonton Oilers here. And we are just about to get underway. All right. Interested to see who picked which side here. When I was in Nest 3 earlier, taking a look and setting this all up, I do believe it was Jordan, at, or uh, JSOS rather, that was playing as Colorado, trying a couple of different teams here. You see an immediate breakout in, an immediate shot, but it's going to be stopped nice and quick. It's a good save there now. The team will have a chance to press on the attack, but it's going to be taken away. Right down on the left side. McKinnon looking for something. Nice hit there. Gets the puck back. Now Ekholm going to go on the counter. Doesn't get past the attack line. It's going to be hit back as now the Avalanche have the puck in the back here. Now we look to play it up. Very slowly McDavid. Nice moves there from him. Goes, gets past a couple. Going to look for someone in the middle here. Has three defenders on him. Should definitely look to pass that one away. Bouchard now might look for a pass inside. Is it going to be a shot? Oh. This just misses as the Edmonton Oilers almost had their first goal there. Gosh, as soon as Colorado had the opportunity here to try and break out immediately. Checked right at the blue line. A little bit of a breakout here for Cade, but it is going to end up just doing a little spinorama and loses the puck immediately. That was just basically a brawl in the blue line there. One more opportunity. It is going to be covered up. They actually release it right in front of the offenders. That was a little bit ambitious, but they're going to get away with this. One more opportunity here for Colorado. It's going to be picked up 
pretty quickly here by the Edmonton player and moved on forward. Yeah, Edmonton definitely playing a bit with a bit more pace at the moment, always being on the attack, but now they lose it. Colorado finally going to have a time to slow it down a little bit, but going to lose it in their own half. The shot's going to come through here. No, it won't. A, a bit more dribbling. The shot comes down. What a save there. Kane knocks it down with his hand, looks for a pass to Fogel. CC now has it. Dreisel goes for the shot. A nice save there again as Edmonton's putting on the pressure, but Colorado are withstanding it. Okay, honestly, a fantastic opportunity to freeze the puck and just kind of stop that pressure from happening. Of course, you do notice that little pressure gauge there and now Kroon saying full pressure. So for those unaware, of course, that is going to mean when you're on the offensive side, you're getting like shot after shot and doing a, a ton of well pressure on the net. The goaltender gets exhausted and it actually makes it easier to score. So just the persistent pressure, consistent shots, it's going to be good. A huge actually opportunity here. Has someone available, but the shot's going to be stopped. Again, the rebound, but it's going to be set aside. And a delayed penalty oh. now from the look of things. Let's see what the referees uh -oh. Colorado gonna be down a player for two minutes here. Penalty elbow, you can see right there. And now Oilers, they've had the upper hand here for the first 10 minutes of this game. It's gonna be on the Oilers now to really take advantage of this power play opportunity. And that's one of those things, like you can't just be so, um, so relax with the uh, the offensive checking button because you can absolutely get yourself into a penalty, into a problem. So with this power play here, this is Edmonton. Oh, it's going to be a goal off the rebound. That was a nice finish there, shot off the goalie, and it just kind of stayed in front of the net. A nice finish as Edmonton are able to take the 1-0 lead. Hyman going to get the first goal there for the Oilers. as a, it's, a, it's a deserving goal for sure. You can see right there with one hand kind of throws a stick at it and it just goes in. Beautiful finish as Oilers take the 1-0 lead. Hey, back in my time of being a broomball player, whether it was a forward or the goaltender, there's just one rule that always remained true is that it doesn't have to be fancy. Just get it on the net. And as we see right there, it almost looks like nothing happened yeah. there, but it was just a mere little poke. Somehow got it through the goaltender, and that is going to be J Sauce. J Sauce is the one playing as the Oilers here, and Shane, uh, Saints Shade is Colorado. So already a little bit of pressure onto Shade as the the captain of the coach is just constantly oh. there at the onslaught. That goaltender was flopping around like a fish, but managed to make the save. I mean, the offensive pressure here from the Oilers is just outstanding. Avalanche just can't seem to get anything but they do get the puck back. Now they get to break. Can they find anything on the counterattack here? Trenton, oh. kind of a shot off target there. Very, very close point in the top corner. Looks like the attack still going for Colorado, but the shot won't come through. Good defense from McDavid. Walker has a lot of space, oh. passes it away though. And now Edmonton looks to break McDavid. Doesn't have too much energy here. Pass up to Hyman. Are we yeah. gonna see a shot here? Sl smack shot is saved, but it's gonna be an offside, I believe. So yeah. Colorado trying their best to withstand the pressure, but the Oilers definitely putting it on. You can tell the nerves kind of got the shade there for a little bit when they finally had their opportunity to break out. They did manage to get around the Edmonton defender, but then one pass too many went right back onto the stick. And we even see oh. they're nearly driving the puck directly into their own goalie, gonna force the freeze. And just the nerves must be coming on through here. But one thing that I will note, it does look like J Sauce is really maybe over utilizing that first line because they're already like pretty exhausted yeah. according to the stamina bar we saw there. Yeah, absolutely. McDavid is just going all around the everywhere here and Johnson's going to get it just on like the counter, like actual sports. but it just doesn't <laughs> get through. Kane does have it now. Can he look for passes through the middle? Looks for oh. the shot comes through. What a save there again from the Colorado goalie. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have a lot of them if the game keeps going like this. Lose it in oh, his man. own back here. There's going to be a pass coming through here. Oh. It'll get cleared out, have to reset here, and that's going to be another offside power play, though, for the Oilers from the look of things. Let's see yes. what happened there. Yeah, that was definitely odd. The offside definitely did occur there, but yeah, power play did come on through. Cannot remember wh exactly what it said, but now this is going to be yet another opportunity. Oh, Big glove save come out here from Shade's goaltender. But yeah, as if you need any more pressure on you, it's Shade oh. coming in through. Oh. It's a pass, it's a shot, almost a shorthanded opportunity, but it is going to be pushed aside, and now it's going to be Jason on the attack. Yeah, Kane has it on this right side. Nice little spin there. He's going to look for the shot there. Oh, oh just missed off the defender, I believe. 
believe. And now yep. Colorado just need to get this out of their half, but aren't able to do so. Another pass comes through, but it's going to be taken away. Colorado now finally have the puck as they look to find another chance here on the short hand. McClark going to look to pass that in, won't find anything. Now Oilers have a two on two on the fast break. Yeah, very, very scary opportunity here for JSOS, but does get pinched off right on the, the wall. But Andrew through is going to take it from the corner, looks to drive it at himself, but it is going to be pushed aside. Shorthanded or not, it is going to be Shane now on the attack. Full strength now as the power play does just complete. Loose pocket. Oh, in! Right off the left skate of the goaltender. Shade, you're back in this one. Wow, Colorado get one back. Very unexpected, but right after the power play ends, uh, Drowin all by his lonesome gets in there and gets the 1-0 goal. Let's take a look at it again. Nice little move there, puts it through the legs of the goalkeeper. And a very, very nice finish to tie it up by one apiece. Oh my goodness, you're definitely, as a goaltender, you're definitely wanting to get a, a Gibby on that one, or a mulligan of sorts, to try and take that one back when it just sneaks through the legs like that. You get a piece of it, but not enough to stop. And here we go, Jesus and Shade, Saints versus Saints, all tied up with about five minutes left on the end game clock, which is about a minute our time. Yep, and it's gonna be looking like uh, an yeah. offside off the start, Colorado got the puck, but they had a player past the blue line. So it's going to be another uh, reset here towards the, uh, the middle. Faceoffs one six for the Oilers, two for Colorado. So on these 50-50 balls, Edmonton's definitely had the upper hand here. They're going to win it again. Reset all the way from the back, go for a bit more of a slow down attack here. At least with the way that JSOS did handle this, however, though, it saved his uh, first line for the very, very oh. end here. Basically, full stamina with some of your best players on the field. Just the most opportune time to try and like break this tie, but kind of stuck in the neutral zone. Crawling on through, looks to get past the defender, immediately cloppered. Another reversal now. It could be Shade looking for the opportunity. Yeah, Calgiano looks for the pass into the middle. Chalk goes a little bit wide. Edmonton going to be back in control of this one. Ryan doesn't have too much stamina. Does lose it. Maybe a nice little 3v2 opportunity here. Paris going to look for the pass to the oh, middle. Calgiano looks for the oh. shot, but great defense from the Edmonton backline to get back in time as Edmonton look to push forward again. All right, it's awesome. Immediately get clobbered, but pass it there. It is. And that is going to be the go ahead goal. Sacrificing one of the players to allow the other one to get the breakout. Sneaks it in left side. And that's a beautiful finish. As you said, sacrifices, <laughs> sacrificing the body. Definitely a big hit there from the Colorado defender, but leaves him in a one on one situation. It's lost that one in the bottom corner as Edmonton oh. take the lead back. Okay, I feel for that player off of the left hand are off on the side there, but hey, you did your job, left it open there, and there was nothing the goaltender could do, one on one like that, left wide open, and there is not much time left in this one. McDavid in the first line here of Jay Sauce's uh, Edmonton Oilers to finish this one off. Shade though, a minute left in game, the puck is gonna just get kind of thrown on through. Do we pull the goalie at this point? I mean, it's only the first quarter. I don't think they'll need to do so just yet, but Colorado need a goal badly. Edmonton, oh, I'm losing my mind, yeah. and counting, looking to find one more goal, put themselves ahead too. They aren't able to find it. And now maybe Colorado have a chance with three seconds left, but no, that's gonna be the end of the first quarter. Edmonton <laughs> gonna go into the second quarter up two to one. Okay, I'll call myself out there for a bit. I've been playing, a, or I've been watching a little bit too much Rocket League, thinking that that was game <laughs> one actually right then and there. But no, this is just a first intermission. We're not even <laughs> into the second period yet but my goodness what a start to this game as the go-ahead goal for the, at least the first period going into Jesus's favor but still a very very like it feels one-sided even though the score doesn't suggest so yeah I mean uh, Colorado had their chances on the counter type but Oilers are definitely way uh, more on the attacking side they're gonna win the puck again straight off the bat McDavid oh. gets destroyed there but Nugent Hopkins has it gives it back to McDavid Ooh. the shot is on target a nice save from the goalie with the glove there as it gives it right back no upside call there it was very very close there just walking through the team looks for a pass to the middle shot back oh and is saved again by Georgia passes it out but that's a very dangerous position to do so McDavid cannot find the, the shot there full pressure is on McDavid takes it around the whole team and nice little snap shot there around the corner as Orioles go, Oilers go up 3-1 unfortunate there for Shade. It's just one of those times where you might just have to 
hang on to it. I know it, it completely cuts off all momentum. You want to yeah. keep the game going, but when there's so much pressure on you, you just have to slow it down. And the perfect play just to find a slot right near the center, put it in left side once again. And now it's a two goal lead here for JSOS. Yeah, JSOS definitely on the upper hand to start early, is on the offensive. And uh, you know, Colorado is just a bit too f f carefree with the puck, I would say, in their own half. If they could fix that up a little bit, but definitely up their chance here. But you can see when Oilers get the puck, they just build from the back, no problem. And they get in with such ease. Another one on one. Sheesh. Very dangerous situation there. A nice save there again from the Colorado goalkeeper. But they're just struggling okay. to get it out. But they do get it out. Now there's like a three on one opportunity. Passes it backwards and won't get a shot off just yet. Pass it again and it's lost. Colorado had a chance there. But now it's going to be Oilers on the counter. Fogel does the 360 then loses the puck. As Colorado re regains possession. It was immediately punished, but then gets almost a little bit of a robbery there, dead center. Now an interception once again. One-on-one -on -one opportunity here with uh, Colorado moving on forward, just looking for an opportunity and somebody to pass to. Off to the defense. Looks like a slap shot, but it is going to be blocked by a defender. Behind the net, take your time with it, find the open player, and immediately tries to just shove it through the middle. There is a defender there. And no matter how many times you try to check, that is going to be clear for the time being. Yeah, but now there's a bit of a chance, gives it right away, but still gets it right back. Colorado might have an opportunity here to pass, but Vogel is there for the defense nurse. Now we're gonna look to pass it up, but lose it offside. Warning here. It looks like the Oilers will be able to maintain the position for just a second. No energy left on these players, by the way. Need to get subbed out quickly. Holloway pass it back, and the puck is reset. Delayed penalty, though, for the Colorado Avalanche. Does Edmonton oh, no. have an extra player? Empty net. Can he find the goal here? Right here. A good save, but puts yep. it right back in as the Oilers score their fourth on another penalty, and they'll go up 4 1. Oh, that's exactly the perfect way to play it. You had the delayed player wait for the goal to get onto the bench and play that thing as a six on five. You have nothing to lose at that point. And sure enough, just scrappy play in front of the net, finding the rebound, just tucking it on in right afterwards. Won't be a penalty anymore for this next um, coming moments here. But now the three goal lead here for JSOS is just really putting shade into a very, very tough position. Yeah, JSOS definitely starting to run away with this one, but it's still not over hockey is a game that could be very high scoring. Let's see how teams play. A little hit into the bench there. Nice little shot there from the Colorado player, but gives the puck away immediately. Ryan on the attack here gets absolutely destroyed there. Nice defense as Colorado now look for an opportunity. They get into the last half. Is there going to be a shot on target here from Joe and takes it around, looks for the pass, but gets a red beautifully by the Oilers defense. Gosh, time and time again. Now we have ourselves a two-on-one. Picks up the puck. Breakaway opportunity. Puts oh, it up save. through. Big save there from the Colorado goaltender. Shade going to be hanging in on this one. Another opportunity. Passes it on forward. Looks for the one-time opportunity. But there's defender directly in their face. One more opportunity now for Jay Sauce. Gets around the defender. But the goalie was completely on top of that one. Still kind of stuck in the Colorado zone. Shade trying to get it out. But it's going to be Jay Sauce pushing this in towards center. A little bit scrappy. But it is going to now be Colorado control. It as oh. go into the offensive zone. There's a chance here. Is there going to be a pass coming to Ben in the middle? But the shot doesn't make it. That was beautiful play there. Just doesn't get the finish. And now Jason, look how quickly he's going around the outside. Misses oh, the net, but gets it right back with McLeod. Pass it out to Exxon. But it is given away as Colorado yet again. Look to break quickly here. Have a great chance here. Can't find any passes, any shots on target. Just give yourself some hope. No, Oilers going to get the steal there. Colorado does get it right back, but kind of stuck in a bit of a horn now. Both teams is just giving the puck away with ease. All right, so Shade has been able to at least contain j a little bit more. Sure, j has more control in the offensive zone, but these opportunities aren't happening as often as they used to. However, Shade has not been able to generate any offense at all in the slightest to kind of counteract this, which is just going to burn them the longer this game goes on here. And if j oh. can continue to control, just going to burn out more and more of the clock. It is going to be Wood here for the side of Colorado trying to make a move. They both are actually going to just out of missing the puck here at this opportunity. But back to the defensive zone. Look to try and make a breakout, Colorado. And Shade, what can he got? 
Yeah, it's a good opportunity. Just looks for the pass there, but feels like the Edmonton defenders always know the pass back into the middle are coming. I think he needs to try a few maybe like shots on target or around the world attempts to just find something. McDavid is going to take it all in his lone. So one against five, looks for the shot, is not able to find it through all the defenders, but Nugget Hopkins does have it. Looks to pass it back out. A lot of members switching sides. A slap oh. shot. Nice little save there from the goalie. Does pass it out to the side, but it's lost immediately again. Nugget Hopkins going to look for a pass. The snap shot from so far out, and it goes in off the deflection. Oilers find their fifth. Beautifully done just to tuck it in in that top right corner. Again, this wasn't like an, even a huge shot, just a little bit of a wrist or a little flick, but the deflection in front, I believe you called. Let's see here in the replay. Sure enough, you have the slightest of redirections. The goalie thought they had that. As a goaltender in my day, I would absolutely <laughs> hate that. You had that up until you didn't. And now that is going to be JSOS leading in this game one of the ECAC season opener with a four goal lead. JSOS putting on quite the performance today. He said NHL is his game of choice. Absolutely, so definitely showing. We've seen it from him so far, but here's a great oh. attack for Colorado. Oh, Just nice. like that in the blink of an eye, they get a second goal. A game is still far from over. Over hockey, a lot of a goal opportunity. So a goal at a time, it's a nice goal as well on the counter. Finally finds the open one-on-one, -on -one, re releases the shot into the top corner and gets the second for the team. Yeah, most of the time during this game, we would see these passes through the center time and time again. But most of the time, that would have been a second pass and it probably would have gotten intercepted. This time, Shade made a fantastic decision. Seeing the player laying on the ground, take it yourself, just launch it. And sure enough, is going to find the back of the net to bring this game within three. If Colorado can find one more goal here in this uh, th uh, second period. It's not too much time left, but anything is possible. But Edmonton just winning these face-offs make it so, so hard for anything mm -hmm. on the Colorado side to get anything going. But here's a great steal on the counter-attack. Oh, he's surrounded, anything. though. Oh, defenders everywhere. You know, like, go down a bit earlier. Kulak does get hit pretty hard. And with 30 seconds left, might be one last opportunity here for Kane. Gets in a great position, takes around the whole team, but pass it right to the Colorado defender. And maybe Colorado with seven seconds left, getting something going. No, five seconds and counting. He's going to hold the puck here. Maybe one slap shot from half here. Nope, not going to happen. All right. We're going into the third period, 5-2 for the Edmonton Oilers. All right, so just a fantastic period overall there from JSOS, able to like really exploit the consistent offensive opportunities that he had at least earlier in the period. It did slow down near the end and then good on Shade as well to be able to make those little micro adjustments and able to find that um, additional goal for this uh, second period. But we definitely need to see a little bit more of that. We're seeing a little bit of panic, I assume, because those few opportunities where Shade is getting the offensive opportunities, it's just one too many passes, it's one too many moves, and usually it just doesn't quite make it through. It hits a defender or something, and then it's just sent the other way. But the one opportunity where just focus down, like just read the room perfectly and took the shot themselves securing that one. We just need to see a little bit more of that. Final period here in game number one. Let's see where they pick off and immediately right back on the gas here for JSOS. Yeah, almost a goal there with like David for the hat trick, but the save comes through offside warning. It's not going to be called as Colorado get possession here and they put themselves very far up, but Oilers do get this steal. You can see JSOS now running down this left side. Nice pass to the middle there, but the shot doesn't come through. Still an opportunity. A shot comes through there. Great save. Is the follow-up going to come through? No, the goalkeeper is there just in time. McDavid won't get on the end of that pass as Colorado take possession yet again. All right. Now, we did see the full pressure gauge show up here for at least a moment, but I guess as soon as you pass halfway, it does deplete. So good there on to Shade to at least deplete that. But again, these... <laughs> just constantly launching the puck when there's a player right in front is very scary. They're trying to make an offensive opportunity out of it, but again, just kind of ran into what was already two defenders in position. It is now going to offer JSOS a little bit of a breakaway opportunity. One player in hot pursuit, oh. but a big save there from the goalie of Shade to keep them in this game. Try and break it out one more time. Does have additional backup, oh. but gets poked away. It is now going to be JSOS on Patrick K to try and make the play happen, but a good little poke check to stop that in strats. Nothing happens. There's Colorado regained possession, but offside uh, gonna come through here. And Edmonton will happily take that. JSOS has been winning most of these uh, tip offs, so he'll be very, very happy with the fact that that's how that turned out. Only 15 minutes away from winning the first game of the season is JSOS. And you could see not too much going here for Colorado as they lose the tip yet again.
Yeah, even these little face-off losses that don't even necessarily go to a player, but just get sent behind the net. Like, there's absolutely nothing really that uh, Shade can do, but just watch oh as the time goes God. down. Good stop on that offensive opportunity there, though, from Shade to immediately take the player out. But an unfortunate pass because it just intercepted immediately deep into the Colorado zone here. Now it's going to be JSOS behind the net looking for somebody. There is one in front oh, of the absolutely going to find him. Ready, waiting, and unattended. Taps that thing in. Beautiful play there from JSOS. He's been shooting that so often that this time there's a player wide open and gets the sixth goal of the game. Nobody there yeah. comes right to his stick, and he will gladly pick up that goal. Yeah, just unfortunately, you saw there is a defender there, but just was not quite within yeah. range to actually make the stop. So. Unfortunately there, once again, for Shade, as this game is getting to the point where it's not, I'm not gonna call it un, like, unwinnable, but it is definitely a uphill battle. It is gonna take a lot of mental fortitude to pull yourself back from this one. Yeah, it's gonna be hard for Colorado to get back into this one as they've been under pressure the entire game. Obviously it is best of three, so plenty of time to recoup mm -hmm. for the next game, but this game is getting out of uh, reach very, very quickly. If Oilers can get one more, that Ooh. slap shot could have been all she wrote, but four goals still a task at hand for Colorado, but the Oilers defense has been almost picture perfect today. Absolutely. And okay, are we actually going to see ourselves oh, a little bit of a brawl fight. here? Okay, it would be NHL if we got a little fist of cups. So let's see here. It's going to be Chase Us and Shade bounded back and <laughs> forth here. Right hook after right hook. It oh, actually looks oh. like Shade might be getting the better of this one. Out. Oh God, just taking <laughs> off his nose and it is actually going to be Chase Us taking care of that. The first hockey fight we're going to see here on the Saints stream. And it's going over to the captain. Yeah, JSOS winning the game, takes on a little side quest, wins the fight as well. <laughs> Achievement unlocked. Five minutes, no big deal. Penalty for both players. They will happily accept that. And let's get back to hockey now. See <laughs> where this faceoff is going to be at. You can see... Passing effectiveness, 75% for the Oilers, only 58 for Colorado. That's definitely been a big key to why this game's been so, such a big lead for the Oilers. Absolutely, especially when Jesus has been able to just have much more offensive time in general. And just makes it that much easier to convert on having all of these opportunities. Oh, That's what we're seeing here once again. Pass on for it with someone ah, right there, there for the rebound. Perfectly done there from JSOS. And JSOS is just running away with this one at this point. He's getting these opportunities off of a pure air. He went through like three defenders with mm -hmm. one move and just a, a nice shot on target there. The save comes through, but not enough defenders to be there for the rebound. A very easy, easy finish. And it's what, 6-2 now, or 7-2 for JSOS. He's looking very good in this game one. Yeah, starting things off with lucky number seven here for the Oilers, for JSOS. Showing exactly why this is their game of choice of the traditional sports settles we have here at St. Clair College, as well as just these esports teams in general. But Shade is not done yet. Wants maybe a little bit more of a momentum booster. They were just going to straight up brute force that thing in if they almost had the opportunity. But now it is going to be Shade stopping them at the blue line. It is going to be the offside. It kind of went back and forth. There is a tripping call on the play as well. And maybe this could be the start of something here as that is going to be JSOS in the box for tripping. Yeah, this is the first time this game Jace has gone south in a little bit of penalty trouble as the Avalanche are going to have their first power play of the game. Let's see if they can really make it hurt. They need to win this face-off, I feel like, if they want to get it going because, I mean, Jace has, been, uh, Jace has been winning every single one. Let's see how it goes here. goes to the Oilers yet again, and it's going to burn a lot of clock off of this power play, but that is an absolute monster hit. Still hangs on to the puck somehow, but now there's a three-on-two attacking opportunity, but great defense there from Jace has nice little stick poke. Gets the puck away. It's Colorado with a minute 30 to get something going here. All right, going to drive it in through the right side, right in front. The shot was on target, but a fantastic save there from the Edmonton goalie. It's going to be intercepted, and sure enough, clear that thing. Kill the clock just like you would in traditional sports. Don't worry about making an offensive play. You have the lead. Just kill the penalty as best as you possibly can. Only about 30 seconds or so. One more opportunity here from Shade, but does get checked off the puck, offside. but it is offside. And that might be all she wrote. A little bit of hope of life for the Avalanche with that power play, but now winning the faceoff has led to a mm -hmm. disaster in that attack. 
And it's going to be the Oilers yet again winning the tip. 4v5, putting on the aggression. Their shot comes through. Nice save there from the goalie. He's just going to pass that one out. But two defenders instantly go. It's going to get through. So Colorado have a three on one in theory at the moment. Can he find the pass to the middle? There it is, the snap shot. Snapshot won't have enough. And right in front of the net, though, another shot oh doesn't goodness. just get into the net. Just can't find this goal. Trying so, so hard. The penalty is over as now Edmonton look to regroup. And shoveling shot after shot, but it does not matter. Three on, oh, passes what back and forth. But a fantastic save to keep this one within five. But the time is just ticking on down here. Slaps oh, on off the post. Fantastic opportunity here from Jaysos. But the goaltender's best friend sitting there in the steal is going to stop that one right in his tracks. Yeah, that time the goalkeeper just opts to hold on to that one, doesn't throw it away. Did you see that stat? Yeah, a lot of hits. 48 hits there for Shade. So if there's one thing they're doing fantastic on, it's throwing the body. Oh. But here's another opportunity actually going the other way. He looks for the juke. It's still oh. there. He's at the back of the net, but not on the right side of it. One more opportunity. He tries to scoop it in front, but not quite this time. That was a good attempt there, but gets the puck back at half court. Finds the pass. Can they find things oh. going one into five? It's a very, very hard skill to pull off. You can see Jace loves using that little oh. ball thing, and that is a beautiful finish there. 8-2 for the Oilers as they're just completely running away with this one. Absolutely full, complete control at this point here from Jace Just able to just capitalize and punish these opportunities when Shade just ends up going for the body. We did see that statistic there where Jace only had thrown maybe say 15, 16 hits while Shade has thrown borderline 50. Yeah. And while that is an impressive stat, yes, it looks really, really <laughs> cool and it's extremely fun. Opportunities like that happen where it's like, sure, you hit the player, what about the other two? Yeah. And you just get to catch yourself out of position. I mean, JSOS has loved the stick pokes. It's been doing him wonders in this game. And yet again, it's gonna get him on the aggressive side here. Only three minutes left, so just a matter of time before this one is wrapped up But Oilers. I want to tack on a couple more, looking for the double digits. Nice little attack there. Great save from the Avalanche goalkeeper. Definitely having a lot of work on his play today, but stepping up to it, making a lot of a very, very good save. Minute 40 and counting. As Colorado maybe want to get one more to have some momentum going into game two. That doesn't be the way to do it. One more opportunity. It is going to just get drilled in towards the net. Going to be stopped by the goaltender, pushed aside. Now up. A around the right-hand wing. Looks for the juke and immediately clobbers him once again. Okay, there's the opportunity where those one-on-one -on -one chucks could absolutely That's do you good, wonders. Yeah. But again, just kind of stopped right at the neutral zone, sent right back into the Colorado zone. And with JSOS just being able to control this over and over and over again, it is just a matter of time that looks like the coach here is going to secure game number one. Yeah, great, great performance. Maybe might get one more here and has a nice little attack going, but another huge hit from the Avalanche. They've been doing it so all night, as you said, Dan, but just doesn't, isn't enough to get the job done. You got to get the puck in the net. And that, oh, there's a chance of one-on-one -on -one here. Let's see, he takes around the goalie. No, shoots to try shooting near post, but the finish oh. is there. Was that an old goal? I'm not too even sure what happened here. Let's see what happens. The shot comes through initially. The save is made. and. Someone sticks it back yeah. in. The Rezo's on the line. Thinking Oilers oh, player got a stick in there. Let's see. 19. Can't see anything from that angle. It's but just nothing it's, but skates. It's a goal. It's a goal. Ninth goal for JSOS right here. As 13 seconds, he'll be victorious. And once again, it doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to be effective. And sure enough, JSOS has just been capitalizing time and time again. Oh, One more for good measure to secure the double digits here in this game. Just one more tap in. I think that went through five hole once again yeah. to the point where you just had to poke it. Adam Henry, it wasn't that a Spitfire. Good to see a, uh, <laughs> an old Windsor right on, yeah. on the screen here. And nice little takes it right off the line to claim the goal for himself. I like that kind of play as the few seconds left. Oh, I didn't even need a tap. Yeah, it was in. It was in. But, you know, goals, he'll take it. He'll take an extra one on his stat sheet. Ten goals for the Oilers in game one. I mean, just a great, great performance from uh, Jay Sauce. And you know, I don't know if in game two it's going to be the same teams or different teams, but what do you think Colorado needs to do different to kind of uh, change their approach to the game? Yeah, like I'm trying to think about this because I mean, this is the first, the first time we're really seeing NHL um, 
here on this, the Saints channel in like some sort of competitive fashion, not just like a casual like uh, playthrough of sorts. So like I'm trying to think to myself, like you don't, you can't change the map or anything along this line. That does nothing. You, you, like sure you could ch change the uh, change the team, but in all honesty, the thing that was just kind of well, there's a handful of things that uh, I think you had pointed out and things I noticed as well. First and foremost, face-offs. Over, like, time and time again, I cannot remember if Shade got a face-off victory during this game at all. And it just made it so that uh, JSOS had control of the game from the get-go at every single whistle. And that is just so tough to have to try and deal with. The, yeah. And then on top of that, the... Like exacerbated amount of hits in this game they're coming out from shade again they're fun to look at it feels really good when it happens but by doing this it's consistently like getting them out of position and causing like two on o breaks two on one breaks or even worse like three on o's or something along those lines there's a reason why we've been seeing jsos kind of rely a little bit more on poke checks yeah. instead of full body hits because at least you could kind of keep yourself in the play even if you miss and then Last but not least, at least from what I had seen, it's just patience in both the offensive and defensive zone. Sometimes your goaltender has the puck, just hold it. Yeah. Again, like I know it's a buzz kill. Some people will look down on you for probably doing it even, but resetting this thing back to neutral is sometimes just the best course of action. Don't launch a thing back out there when there's literally McDavid right in your face. <laughs> like it's just a bad, not a good idea. Overall bad idea. And then the patience in the offensive zone where you might have yourself kind of in the corner and they try to pass it towards center when there's already three defend or three defenders from the opposing team sitting right there. The likelihood of your pass actually getting on through there uh -huh. is just not high in the slightest. It's completely okay to pass it backwards to your defense. I feel like I'm coaching Broomball right now. <laughs> that I feel like I'm having some deja vu here, but it's just incredible to see the trend the translation here going in towards a video game but of the points that uh mentioned you have anything yourself that you want to add to that i mean i think the biggest uh problem was just the passing and the offense a lot of the offense was just generated off uh fast breaks if you they got an opportunity two on one two and zero and eventually a couple goals did go in so that's that's mm -hmm. a great a great start but uh, the pass into the middle just becomes a little bit too predictable. Throughout that game, every time there was a two-on-one, it was never a shot near post or trying to dribble around. It was always trying to pass it to the person in the middle and finding uh, the finish there. And it just didn't work out there. But now I heard it's going to be J-Sauce on the Red Wings this time. So going to switch up the teams. All right. But still, after a very dominant game one, going to have to play well to win the second one. A little bit of local flavor here going to bring the Red Wings out to play here. But again, like I know we were talking a lot about things that like Shade could have possibly improved on, but I do not want to count them out. There were still plenty of moments of brilliance just when the mistakes did happen. JSOS was fantastic at punishing them. So this time by, what happens here? We're going to see in the defensive zone, it is going to now be Shade moving it on towards the the Detroit zone. Does going to break through himself and send oh, the pass. Oh, you shoot there. That was the opportunity, but again, just a little bit slow on the trigger figure and could not quite get that one done. It's going to be oh. passing right back once again. Breakout opportunity. Sweet. Pinch that thing against the post and hold it. There you and go. sure enough, okay, there we go. Just going to slow this thing down. You had literally nobody there. Just, just freeze it. It's a better start to game two. Uh, I've played NHL before. You know, it's not that easy to get those snapshots off. So Absolutely. I completely understand why a bit of a hesitation there. A couple of deflections come through, but Colorado's goalie is very, very solid. And now let's see what he does on the fast break. Looks to pass it to the middle again, and the save comes through. Still, these patterns are staying the same, and it makes it very, very readable. And JSOS is doing a great job of reading it so far. Absolutely. And of course, we do get all the <laughs> That was a crowd ball right there. Just absolutely laying them out right off the blue line but what we're seeing from the, when Shane gets the offensive opportunities if you we have JSOS's point of view that's why we're seeing uh, them in the red here but you'll notice as the breakout happens always playing the player in the middle for the most part to stop these but in this one on one opportunity just enough of a hit to knock them off the puck and with no other offenders there oh. it is just all night and day here parrot here for the wigs with three others oh. but okay the defenders get back there from shade just in time just in time kane though takes it all the way one shot save two shots <laughs> save the end you see now 
Colorado's gonna hold the puck. Good. So improvements are being made. Uh, different changes and adaptations are being made. So it's so what you need to do, especially after a rough first game. These adjustments are doing the Colorado wonders so far. Still fa struggling on <laughs> those faceoffs. Another save there was a good pass to the defender. Now the counterattack begins, but a nice steal from Jason. Still gonna lose it quickly, and this game is looking to be way more competitive than the first one. Gosh, these open eight hits are just killing me here. But we're going to see another pass right through the center, right back. Try sort of tic-tac-toe, not going to quite happen. But the pressure is on here. The exhaustion is going to come into play here for Colorado. Oh, for Still hits. looking for that opening goal. Shot on target, going to get blocked. Oh. And a rebound, though, is going to be pushed aside. Shade with control, trying to bring it up the right-hand side. Looks for the long ice pass, but it is going to be stopped in the center. Does manage to scoop this one up, but then the pass backwards actually kind of bites them a little uh -oh. bit. And the drag race uh -oh. back is going to be J-Sauce getting it. Has Three there, but a fantastic check actually. One more shot on target. It's loose in front, but it is going to be Jason's back to the defense, back to the center, but it's going to be checked up. And finally, Shane gets a chance to breathe. Dangerous opportunity there for Jason. What a shot nice. there, Lion, with a pretty easy save with the glove there. Now the one on one is on. Let's see who decides to play this one. Nice defense there from the Colorado defender. As now they have another counter, but that pull oh. is so good. Gets it back, but it is an offside. A little bit of time to breathe for both players, but through the first 10 minutes, we're tied up at zero. Okay, yeah, this has just been a fantastic second game here so far. Like, sure, JSOS is still getting opportunities, but they have been dealt with for the most part. Shade has been able to get a little bit more control. Granted, it hasn't necessarily converted into shots per se, but it doesn't necessarily feel as threatening. Oh, we have a, a two on one opportunity, nearly split the defenders one more time towards the center, but it is going to be picked up here by Shade directly in the slot, trying to get it out. Sure enough, it is going to be able to get oh, it. That's a penalty. That's a penalty. Where's your glasses? Okay, there we go. It is going to be called. That is the one thing you got to yeah. worry about, about using poke checks too often. Sometimes you catch a skate. Sometimes you do catch a skate. It's a huge opportunity here for uh, the Rockies. They are, uh, the Avalanche, sorry, the Colorado Avalanche. They have an opportunity here now on this power play. Last time they did not convert. This time, let's see. What we decide to you see you saw on the bottom right there, lockdown defense, maybe the play here for Detroit. They do win the faceoff. Yet again, oh. a bad pass though, an opportunity, a shot on target. Line finds a save, pass it out immediately. You want to get rid of this one, but it's going to look for the attack. A little bit greedy, I would say, on the power play. You kind of just want to stall it out, but let's see if the Avalanche can find the man in the middle. Oh. Finds it there, but what a save there near post from the goalkeeper. As now it's going to be the counter attack. A little one on one action here. Great defense though, but the puck is still there. Nobody in the middle. One on one for Valenko, but does not find the goal. And it's going to be saved. Now it's going to be Colorado yet again on the power play push. I thought the offside went up there, but no, it didn't. It's Colorado with 30 seconds left. You need to find something going here. One more opportunity, two players in the slot. Couldn't just take it themselves, looks for the corner. Right idea, but could not quite get that one to stick on target. And now shorthanded or not, does not matter. Jason's got to charge on through, has one with them, but there is four more what? defenders. <laughs> and sure enough, just killing the time, wait for the power play to go away. Yeah, you're gonna put yourself offside, but this is your opportunity to regroup. Get your players in the positions that you want them in. Wait for your next chance to break out. Just don't get it stolen from you. Threads a needle oh, between two, oh. but the pass is gonna be intercepted and poked away, but Jason still did have control for at least a second, but now there's going to be Shade behind their own net to try and get a breakout. Yeah, Shade looking for the counterattack here. One on three action, does oh. not find any shot there. It's only four minutes left in this first quarter. Does not find uh, the best uh, pass there. Colin going to have it on the outside, takes it now. One, look for the pass into the middle, but oh, a nice dive. little dive there. He's been doing it all matchup so far, and it's been working out pretty well for him so far. Let's see how the counter begins for Detroit. Empty net for Detroit. The delayed penalty. Can they find it again on the power play? No. 65 for a few more seconds here. Can he just stall out and pass it around? This is good play. Looking for the open man. The shot comes through. Still has possession of it. Doesn't have there it anymore. Goes. There goes the penalty. First power play of the game for Detroit. Getting caught with interference, and that's one of the scary things, again, when you're going for consistent body hits and just uh, body checks. Sometimes if you hit somebody who doesn't have the puck at all, you will get blasted <laughs> for interference. And I mean, it doesn't get much clearer than yeah. that. The puck was nowhere near. You just absolutely bodied the dude, and he immediately takes them down. And j on the power play, this is going to be scary. Yeah, he's going to have it until the end of the quarter here, so let's see what we can get done. Nice little pass 
there, takes into the middle, the shot comes through, <laughs> saves there, and it's an own goal coming out from Colorado. What a disaster. As the, that, was, that was just the most unfortunate. It was a great save, a great block, but just the most unfortunate call you've ever seen. Not like this. That's just an absolute heartbreaker here. It did get just kind of a slow motion dumped on through, oh, but sure oh, enough, no. off the stick oh, no. of Shade's defender and was just enough momentum to go on through and knock it into their own goal. You're definitely wanting a mulligan on that one, but at least for Shade's favor here, you got plenty of time to bring some momentum back into this one and get yourself back into this game. Been playing fantastic so far, keep it up. And almost another goal off the bat there for Detroit, winning those face-offs makes it so easy, but here's a one-on-one -on -one for Colorado. Can he find anything here? Can he find the finish? The, oh. slot, the dive again just gets the stick on it. Still 30 seconds and counting, oh, but no. Oh. Gives it away no energy on a Devon Cat here. Looks to take it all the way, looks for the pass, and that's another goal on the quick attack. Detroit with two on zero, go up two to zero. Stiff armed two of the players there from the side of Colorado and manages to still take it themselves. Get rid of number 20, get rid of one more, just tanks them, gets the pass, gets the shot. Beautifully done there from Jesus to make that happen and not get nervous considering they were being hunted just by those two defenders. Yeah, I mean, it's a great finish. And it was such a close first period, but in this last minute, it really has fallen apart for the Avalanche here. Still, they need to win these face-offs if they, if they want to get something going. Five seconds, though, a wide open opportunity, a nice save there. Looks like Detroit will be taking the 2-0 lead heading into the second period. Oh boy, so yeah, this period was extremely close until it wasn't. I mean, we're used to a lot of our scoreboards from other esports titles calculating damage and whatnot. But one thing that we do not get to calculate or see on the scoreboard at all is the emotional damage done <laughs> from an own goal. Yeah. And I feel like that might have shooken up shade a Absolutely. little bit. So honestly, if you have a couple of moments here between periods, Take the breather. I don't know if it goes right into game immediately, but if you do have that opportunity for like a minute break, just take it, slow down, because honestly, you're holding your own fantastically. Just one mistake is going to punish you deeply here as we get started here with period number two. Yeah, I mean, the mental game is very, very important. Shot off the poster. Oh. Great save also comes through, so no goal here. Puck right behind the net. Colorado need to find something on the attack here, but just a lazy pass. It feels like right to the Detroit defense. Still, Colorado could be with the puck here and gonna look for an attack. That's a nice pass. One more pass into the middle. Could have definitely had maybe a one-on-one -on -one opportunity there, but Detroit gonna regain position of the puck and delayed penalty for Colorado. Oh, it's gonna be boy. another power play for the Detroit. Yeah, Trippy gonna be to call this time by. Just unfortunately, it seems like Shades just getting caught left, right, and center with these last couple of calls here. Tripping being the next one. Just kind of getting a little bit desperate oh. when you see these hits. And he's going to unfortunately, again, get stuck on the power play up against, uh, or on the penalty kill, rather, up against Jay Sauce's power play, which has been fantastic so far. Granted, the first time it was a little bit of an accident, but you got a second chance here. Can you kill this thing? You'll look to kill this one out. A bad pass there from Jace as a counter. And Colorado's gonna come through down the man, looking for the short hand to go. Walker okay. takes it the whole team, but gets it poked away. Now Colorado need to sprint back desperately. They are gonna be able to defend it and are on the attack again, but nice defense from Storm again as he looks for the attack here. Nice move there, gets around one, looks for the shot near post, but it's a nice save from the goal. He had another snapshot, it's gonna be deflected this time. Walker gonna have control of that one, but Kane gets in a very dangerous position, passes it out. Larkin passes out to Perkin, nice save there from the goalkeeper. It was very, very close to going in, and it's gonna be reset. But Colorado are doing a great job of killing this power play so far. Absolutely, one more opportunity here from Jace Sauce. Has oh, someone pass. available, and that is what gonna just goal. get drilled in on the right-hand side. Fantastic passing play with the one-timer, and that is gonna make this a three game. Yeah, I mean, a bit of a caster curse. I was saying how good <laughs> he's killing the penalty, and then Patrick Kane, wide open, right in front of the net. Will not be missing that opportunity as Detroit is just playing a beautiful game. Jace definitely has been playing the game a lot. You can tell he's been practicing. He's been playing so flawlessly so far in this series, and I don't think he's slowing down anytime soon. Gosh, all of these plays are just giving me broom ball flashback, flashbacks here, because again, we get to see uh, Shade go for the body when it was a one-on-one -on -one attempt when in, or a two-on-one. -on -one. And basically, if, if rule one was the other one, if rule two here for uh, defenders, if you're stuck at a, a 1v2, 
always take the pass and trust that the goalie will get the shot. When you go for the body, you leave the net wide open. And it just bit Shade once again here. Looking for a little bit of offense, though. Gets past one. Gets past another, but denied by the glove. Fantastic save. Great save there, but gets it right back, right in front of the net. Can he find the shot there? It is a very, very quick goal from the Avalanches. They, All right. they are not out of it just yet. Down a couple now. It was a struggle to get goals all throughout this uh, match, but second period here, pick a quick one up just out of nowhere, really felt like an, a rare mistake coming up from uh, Jay Sauce. Just gives the puck away in a terrible position, and it's good that Colorado can capitalize. It's rough when the first initial shot just doesn't get scooped up and the rebound is left there, because opportunities like that it can absolutely be punished, and there we go. That's exactly what Shade was looking for. Wasn't necessarily, again, the fanciest of plays, but just picked up where their partner oh. left off, and then picking up as someone else gets dropped off right in the middle of the defensive zone here. But now it is going to be Shade diving on through, has one with them, is covered by the defender. Good read there from Jaysos again to shut that down and go on the offensive. Yeah, and that's a nice pass there in the one-on-one. -on -one. Oh. Beautiful goal on the counter and against the best players. You can't keep continuing to make the same mistakes. Jaysos picks that mistake out, gets the one-on-one, -on -one, and gets the beautiful finish to put Detroit up 4-1. Yep, immediately took the body, but there is still one more, and they are able to get basically a breakaway opportunity. And finally, the one-on-one -on -one juke does go successful here for JSOS to just extend that lead. I believe it's 4-1 now at this point yeah. here. Granted, again, still in the second period, still lots of gameplay left here, but I can't help but feel that maybe there's a little bit of a train running, and it's going right through Shade's play. Yeah, from the look of things, Shade definitely needs to turn things around quickly if he wants to get himself back into this match and into this series. But there is going to be oh a fight boy. initiated, and they're going to brawl it out yet again. The Colorado player, Mason, doing a great job so far against Velenko here, but now they're about even on the health. Let's see who can land the last few punches here. Mason going to get taken down very low, both one punch away, oh. and it's going to be Velenko taking them down. Gives the team a moral boost there as both players going to go into the box for five minutes. But yet again, it's just very worth it for JSOS. Two games in a row wins the fight. I mean, as if JSOS needs any more momentum in their favor, that fight going <laughs> directly into their favor. Just saying good night to the Colorado player as they take a nap on the ice real quick. But it is going to be the face-off on the offensive zone here of the wings. It is going to be one once again here. JSOS right outside the blue line, looking for an opportunity to go on through. Right outside the hash marks, and it is going to be the shot on target. Going to get blocked by a couple defenders. Loose along the side now. Opportunity here for Shade to try and get a move on. Just looks for the pass in the center, but the defender is going to absolutely gobble that up for free. Oh, for the offensive opportunity. The, the way around. Yeah, it was a good try again. Huge oh. hit there, but still having the puck here. Looks for the pass, but a These nice dives. dive there. These dives are definitely giving a lot of value to JSOS. Nice defense, though, there in the one on one, but loses it at the worst opportune moment. One on one, JSOS, can you find it? Nice save there from the goalkeeper. Held it a bit too long there. So can look for the pass out. Wallman has it around here still. Keeps it inside, but does give it away as. Colorado look to break, lose it in their own half. The pass got to come through here, but won't be there. Puck is just left to low. Nobody's going to have that one, but it looks like Jason does pick it up. Looks for the pass out, gives it back to his goalkeeper. Is Colorado going to be able to get on the end of this? No, it doesn't look like that's the case, but they do. Oh. Shot on target is saved away as Detroit is just looking for this goal, but Colorado not giving it easily. Getting so much mileage off of these poke checks. We're seeing opportunities where Shade could very well make a play off something as we then see the puck just slowly but surely Power go play. away. And we are actually going to see a penalty here. It is going to be a trippy call or a slashing call, I do believe, here on uh, on JSOS, actually. So a rare opportunity here for Shade to try and make a power play opportunity work in their favor. But it's all going to start off of this face off because I feel like you lose this face off, you lose 30 seconds of your two minute clock. And he hasn't won one face off so mm. far. So if there's ever a time to do so, this would be the time. Oh. It's not. But oh, he wins it instantly right back as Colorado are pushing on the offensive here. Looks for the pass. He's not able to find it. Nice little hit there. Won't be able to find anything either now. It's a short hand opportunity. Looks for the 360. Puck with the 
goalkeeper. It's a oh, very geez. dangerous position to have the puck there, but works out in the end. A huge hit there, but now Detroit is on the counter. A massive hit there. Knocks his helmet off, but still the puck is in the possession of the Reds. As they look for the shorthanded goal, oh, two my. saves by the goalkeeper. Won't let that one in, but Colorado on this power play. It's definitely not how they want to play this one. Oh, my God. Literally knocked his block off there for a second as the helmet goes flying. But in the meantime, all of these shorthanded opportunities here for JSOS just means that this power play is basically killed by now. One more opportunity here for Shade to try and get something to happen here. Two seconds left to go. He's not going to end up being able to capitalize on it. JSOS now has the full strength here. Five on five play. But it is going to be now Shade does get the offside, however. A little bit too eager, it looks like. So, unfortunately here, not going to really be able to muster anything out of that power play. But uh, didn't manage to muster a pretty... Pretty cool hit, though. Yeah, I mean, that was, a, that was a giant hit. No helmet. I mean, that's going to hurt in the morning. Oh, 100%. <laughs> and did you see that stat right there? In, it was talking about the face-offs. And that's JSOS's 13. Make that 14 now to 2 as we see him just dancing through the hash marks. And is nearly going to find a scoring opportunity, but it is going to be stopped by Shades goalie. Yeah, it's a good save. No offside this time. Colorado only down three. It's still very go. much winnable. Needs to find a shot on target here. Ooh. Beautiful opportunity. The save comes through twice from the Detroit goalkeeper. Avalanche with an amazing chance there, but just can't find it. And now Detroit going to look for the counter. A big oh. hit there, but a nice move around to pass to the teammate. Pass back. One more pass. Can we find a slap shot on the end here? No, it doesn't look like that's the case. He's oh. going to lose it, actually. Now a two-on-one opportunity for the Avalanche. Wood going to have it on the outside. Pass it into the middle. Does keep possession of that one, Colton. Pass it back. Can we find a shot here? There's a slap shot. Nice little save off the mask there as Detroit with 40 seconds and counting. Look for the fifth goal. One on one opportunity. J Sauce oh. won't be able to find just a save from the goalkeepers. Very, very good. Oh, so close. And some decent chances on both sides. But now J Sauce once again shot on target as the clock is winding down. But it is just going to get shot high. Oh, that's, that's a, a penalty. Really bad trip, actually. The delayed penalty is going to come on out. But as the clock winds down to almost zero, we got 0.6 seconds left to go here. This means that the third period will have shade on the power play. Yes, it will. Let's see. Does win a tip and oh. gets the shot off, but it's a great save there just in time. As now we are going to be going into the third period. Colorado need a big, big comeback to keep themselves in this series. But it looks like Jay Sauce is just playing amazingly with uh, the Detroit Red Wings here and is mm -hmm. looking to run away with the 2 0 series. Yeah, absolutely. On both sides, I'll say that the, like, the punishment. The punish game from JSOS isn't as like apparent compared to what we saw in game number one. But it's also because the mistakes or any of the prob or not any of the problems, but any of the mistakes that Shade was making aren't anywhere near as egregious as it was in game one. So adjustments are being made. JSOS has been able to capitalize on the few opportunities that they do get. As we do see again, this power play opportunity here for Shade, but yet we're in their own zone. Shorthanded or not, JSOS still another trip. the play. And I think another trip, so oh, it's going to be a five on three now for Colorado. Oh, if there's ever a chance to put one in the back of the net, this has to be it. A huge advantage for the next few minutes here. And you know, if they don't get a goal here, I think the, all the oh. momentum that he's gotten from these power plays are just going to be for nothing. And to boot here, that first line of penalty kills, your top penalty killers are all gassed out, so you're going to have to rely on the second or third line, some of maybe your not-so-stronger players, oh, offside. but that offside's actually really, really going to hurt Shade here. Unfortunately, barely going over the blue line. Yeah, Shade, unfortunate, just takes it back, and struggling to win these face-offs, having the puck in that position would have definitely been beneficial. You can see hits again, 49-12, to 12, so Jesus, not a big fan of hitting, but the poke checks, the stick checks have been Absolutely amazing, and gets the puck in the other side. But now, has to be careful here. It's a big attack, a three-on-one. Can they find anything here? The slide comes through, doesn't find the pass into the middle this time. Looks for a bit more control. Has to spread out the attack a little bit when you have a five-on-three. Can't get all congested in the middle like that. 18 more seconds. Let's see if he can find something here. Gets in there. Needs to slow it down just a tiny bit, but it's offside, and that might just be the five-on-three wasted. This might be the nerves kind of coming into gear here. You feel like you have your opportunity to go you want to go but you're not on side so just constantly getting trapped on the outside of this blue line here and you just you basically oh. called it exactly right sorry go ahead going to face off 
Yeah, got the face off. This could very well turn into the offensive opportunity. One player is back, oh, though. This is now a five on four. And there is a short-handed breakaway coming out here from Jay Sauce. Oh! Scores. short handed goal from Jay Sauce. What a finish there from Jay Sauce. Just finds the one-on-one -on -one and plays it perfectly. Takes the goalie right, shoots it left. Jack Petri with a beautiful finish there. And just no defense inside even with a man up. Takes it left. Beautiful, beautiful finish. 5-1 now for the Red Wings. You might must think that might be all she wrote. Absolutely. This habit here for Shade where you're kind of just crashing the middle once you have the puck is unfortunately maybe just getting a little bit predictable here for JSOS. Always in control of a player in that area and has been able to find a pass. One more opportunity going to be coming out here as this power play does come to a close. A successful three on five penalty kill here for JSOS. That's going to look good on the stat sheet. Very successful. Still in control here for Shade. Does get caught out though. One more good poke check and now it's JSOS back in control. Oh, oh, <laughs> I don't think they realized they necessarily even had the puck on that one. Yeah. Just a sneaky little interception, but it does just end up going the other way. Yeah, the load up there was juicy for that slap shot. Huge oh. hit there. You don't see them too often from JSOS, but right there completely annihilates the opposition. There's 15 minutes left in this game. The Red Wings just need to hold on to this lead. Oh it's my. going to be another great opportunity, but nice save there. JSOS looks to go again. Nice little poke there from the goalkeeper. Pucks right in front of the net. Another shot on target. Georgia, nice shot, and he's going to hold on okay, to this okay. one. Doesn't throw it away. Detroit putting on the pressure, looking for their sixth. All right, I was going to say, there's literally two de uh, Detroit players right there in front of you. Please hang on to that thing. And yeah, you were mentioning very, very few times do we see um, JSOS go for the open ice hit. <laughs> that was a perfect time perfect. for it, though. <laughs> Absolute clobbering, the cron walling, if you will, right on the blue line once again. With JSOS with the face-off win, though. Shot immediately goes into the defender. Colorado the other way, looking for somebody, but it's just going to get dumped to the referee. I know the, the referee was white and black. Your jersey is kind of white and black, but nope, that is not a teammate. Offside for such a long time there, but slowing down the play now and that has a oh. great opportunity oh. no shot comes through but nice gets the puck right back has to pass it off to someone but takes it down the middle themselves great oh. shot lion is there for it. the save yet again that was a great opportunity though for colorado but now have to get back into defense quickly detroit has a good attack here larkin has no energy pass it backwards and there's a steal from paris is gonna look for the counter goal here for the shot maybe does draw it back oh. finds the shot great play there from colorado doesn't find the goal still opening up here looking for another shot takes it around the world but the defense is there from Detroit but definitely a few signs of life here from Colorado. Absolutely that was probably the best two opportunities Shade had there for scoring in the last couple of minutes and honestly the pressure is still on. Oh. One more tap but not what? the rebound actually the puck was loose was like and Jaysos is actually going to be the one just firing out in the middle of the offenders does not matter though it is going to get put out into the neutral zone in the end here but still it's going to be Shade once again just up the right hand side going to be taken care of though it is going to be not JSOS trying to bring this up into the offensive Ooh, zone hits. immediately going to get clobbered right on the blue line once again we're going to bring this right back into the Detroit zone and looks for the pass into the middle but it's just too congested to find anything there now Detroit have a chance JSOS wants to put one more pass oh. a huge hit again but it leads to another one on two situation here comes the smash shot the shot is not there but it's going to be a power play for the Detroit team as there was a charging, charging oh call against the Colorado Avalanche. You can see he's not happy with that one. Let's see how that one happened. We won't get to see it, but another power play. Oh, yeah. if, if you're going to charge somebody, you're going to get fought, but it looks like they're actually not going to do that. I definitely understand wanting to do that if that was an actual game, but it is going to be JSOS with the, vic uh, the face-off victory shoot straight on target. But yeah, honestly, the biggest break there for, uh, for Shade was that that charging call was not a four minutes because yeah. that could have been a game ender but we're seeing jesus again shot after shot opportunity after opportunity and he will capitalize bring this up to i believe five goals now yeah i mean that could be the game ender on the power play three for three this game that's absolutely amazing and he's been good on the power kill as well so Great performance so far from uh, Jay Sauce, and he's showing why he's uh, he's ready to go in in this league, taking a huge lead here in this third period. It's going to be nearly impossible for the Avalanche to come uh, back into this one, but there's always a little bit of hope. We've seen probably the best play from Colorado in this final period, 
throughout the whole series, this period has been very, very good for the Avalanche. And see if maybe mm -hmm. they can get a goal or two back here, kind of just for the pride and, you know, just to have a bit of momentum going into the next match they have. I mean, lock it and go nuts, it's still possible, but it's definitely such a tall, tall task here. I said it was 5 1, six actually 6 1 here in the favor oh. of J Sauce. It's going to be one more shot here for Shade, though. So many more shots, and it is actually going to force J Sauce to hang on to that puck and force the face off. Yeah, I mean, it's another opportunity, a shot on target. You just <laughs> you hit there. You want to get those shots on target because you never know. A uh, deflection here, a save here, a follow-up here. You could get a goal out of nothing. So the more shots Colorado can put up, the higher the chance of them scoring goal goes up. 100% here. As we're now seeing an awkward pass, actually, there from j -Sos goes directly into Shade. Shade now with control, but did not necessarily get as much control on as I guess they were going to be hoping. Gets poked away pretty quickly. It is now going to be j -Sos up the left-hand side. Going to kind of get shut down on the boards. Just going to allow for Shade to get some control for the time being. Up the center, does get past one, but loses control of the puck. Going to be right on the red line here now. Breaking it into oh. the Colorado zone, but gets absolutely squashed up against the right board. And one more time here for Colorado for Shave to try and get a breakout. 66 hits, that's a lot of hits what? for the Avalanche, but right in the meat of things. Nice pass there from the goalie, gets it to Valeno, who's looking at, down the right side. Kane is wide open, does not have any energy left. It's been a long game for Kane here, but uh, looking, looking for the shot here on the outside. Can he find the finish? Oh. Passes it way too late there, kind of maybe could have wrapped around the goalie and found it into the back of the net there. Nice move there from Sprong. Chase is looking for the finish here. That's going to be another power play. He didn't have the puck. Charging again. It's going to be charging yet again. Is with two minutes left. That's probably going to wrap it up. Again, I know these plays look fun when you just want to go from your from your goal line basically and just destroy <laughs> somebody, send them to the shadow realm. But then you end up going to the shadow realm yourself as yeah. you're taken off the field for a good two minutes at least. And at this point here, that is basically all she wrote as there is only two minutes and 10 seconds left on this clock. I mean, let's see if Jesus can score oh. more. Yes, there it is. Patrick Kane, second goal of the game. I was going to say, I think we might see another goal in the power play. Three for three on the game. Now four for four. It's just a little snapshot. No, not too much power in it. Not too much thought behind it, but no defenders near Patrick Kane. One of those players that can definitely score there. And the tip was crucial there by him, which, just as I said, if you mm -hmm. put those shots near the goal, good things will happen. 7-1 lead now for Jason. Absolutely. The power play classic tic-tac-toe with a little bit of extra sauce with the tip at the end there just to get... It confirmed into that net here. 7-1 now in the JSOS favor. Looks like this ECAC first game will be oh, going that's over. A trip. <laughs> but we're going to get ourselves a little bit of a trip here, it looks like. Time is going to wind down until the Saints, or I say the Saints, the Saints. Saints. <laughs> but until JSOS does touch it. Sure enough, that is going to be the trip called. But this one's still just too far to get to. Yeah, maybe a little bit of a hope for consolation goal with a minute 22 left here. And, uh, you know, a goal wouldn't be too bad here for the Avalanche. You know, it's been a oh. couple of games. That's a bad <laughs> trip right there. But let's see. Can the 100% power kill hold on here for j -Sos? I think j -Sos will be very happy if that was the case, killing all of the penalties in this game. There's been so many of them, so definitely would be good for j -Sos. But now he has an attack going here. Shot, great save there from the goalkeepers. Colorado finally get the puck back 45 seconds and counting. Going to look for a goal. Now it's an opportunity here. The defense comes through, though. They get the stick, and that might be all she wrote. Absolutely. One more shorthanded opportunity here for JSOS. He's going to bring it in deep, and honestly, that's all he has to do. Just wind down the clock. One more opportunity here. Shot just going to end up going wide. I do believe a whistle was called, however. I do not know necessarily why, though. We've gone out of play. It must have hit the netting or something. Yeah, because we're just going to bring this right back into uh, the shade zone. Pass immediately, shorthanded opportunity once again. Going to try and stuff it in there, but actually a fantastic save coming out here from the Colorado goaltender. But again, at this point here, Shade knows that this one's basically died. If the goaltender has it, just going to basically spit it out. Uh, yeah. yeah, there it is. Thought he was going to come to his cruiser there for a second. But yeah, 10 seconds left to go. Looking like j is going to secure this first ECAC victory. Yeah, great match from j and they're going to get their first win of the season. Going to look to continue their winning ways as the season goes on, but 
pretty dominant uh, first game for Jay Sauce, and it's a great start to the season. No, oh, absolutely. It's heartbreaking that it had to be a St. Clair yeah. versus St. Clair game number one. But I do look forward to seeing both of these players throughout the rest of the season as well, as it looks like there's going to be a couple of things that kind of fall into our favor to allow us to start uh, capturing more matches at once again. So, hey, we might really get some sports games on a little bit more, more often, especially if... Um, like it's not necessarily too taxing, like, observer-wise. We can absolutely bring one yeah. in there. But I'll tell you what, this was a heck of a lot of fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And just being able to, to cast some hockey, see a brand-new team also in action. Again, heartbreaking that it had to be a team kill, but so it's just a, just a great day. Yeah, it's just a great day. And, you know, at the end of the day, they are both Saints, so a lot to learn from j -Sauce there. Like, mm -hmm. can coach coach up the players with probably all the things we spoke about knows on a way better level. So it's uh, no, matter, no matter the outcome today, uh, it's good for that team. But it's a great performance for j -Sauce. Absolutely. I'm definitely going to be looking forward to seeing more um, sports games action and more action for Saints across the board. In fact, I, if I do recall correctly, we might even have a schedule or something on one of our scenes in the back here just to kind of confirm what we have going on for the rest of the week or more specifically for tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. Because if I do recall correctly, we have some more sports. In fact, sure enough, there it is. Madden. And this time it's not a Saints team kill. We get to play some Madden this time, some football up against against Mount Aloysius, Aloysius? Aloysius? Mount Aloysius, Aloysius College. And that is going to be a first in a while or a first ever. I, for whatever reason, I do not ever recall ever playing that team in anything. So that yeah. is going to be interesting, interesting to see. It looks like they have some pretty cool facilities, though, from what I research I was doing earlier. So they must just be on the come up, ready to, to rock some head. And honestly, I'm going to be looking forward to... Uh, seeing the matchup as well. It's not going to be JSOS that we're streaming, though. It will be another player. Mm -hmm. But it's just awesome to see, of course, all of our teams here at, at St. Clair. But it is cool to see some of the new stuff. Absolutely. It's awesome having the uh, the sports games on stream. I'm a big fan. I love watching them. I love playing them. So it's been a fun today. But that's going to be all she wrote for us today. Thank you to everyone in the back who made the stream possible. It's very hard without people. That usually Dan is back there. Today, yeah. he's joined me up on the cast. Thank you to our sponsors. We got Alienware, Tim Hortons, Subway, St. Clair, Alumni Association, and St. Clair SRC. That's been it. Thank you guys for watching. As I said again, Theo, Dan, it's been a blast, and we'll be seeing you tomorrow at seven, at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock again. Eight yep. o'clock again for the Madden gameplay, and have a good night.